in the previous lesson, I reminded you guys about how absolute values actually work. Now we're going to start looking at the absolute value equations. And specifically in this lesson, I'm going to show you the two main types of or the two main different ways that they can ask it. In the first one, they'll give you something with an absolute value. So for example, x minus one, and that will be equal to seven. So what's important about this type is that this absolute value is already by itself. Can you see that? There isn't like a number in the front or there isn't like some type of fraction over here or maybe there isn't like a two plus something like that over there. What we can see is that the absolute value is already by itself. Okay, so we'll be looking at some of those today. And then in the other scenario, we're gonna look at ones where the absolute value is not by itself. So that would be examples like this. Okay, you see, so this absolute value is not by itself. It has like a random number in the front. Okay, or for example, it might look something like this, like x minus one over six equals to three, or maybe it'll be three plus x plus four equals two. Okay, so we will also be looking at some of those today. The first part of the video will be the type ones, and the last part of the video will be the type twos. Let's start. So here is a type one kind of question. Okay, so can you see that the absolute value is already by itself? That's the first step. We always want to make sure that the absolute value is by itself. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to completely ignore what you see inside there. So I'm literally just going to try to scratch that out, okay? I don't want you to um, worry about what is inside there. What I want you to think about instead is what number could you put inside here so that when you get the absolute value, it will give you an eight. Well, there are two different scenarios. Um, the first one, you could put an eight inside there because what is the absolute value of eight? Well, that's eight. In the second scenario, what else could you put there? Well, you could also put minus eight. Why? Because what is the absolute value of minus eight? That also gives us eight. So would you agree with me that whatever you put here, it could either be an eight, it could either be an eight, or it could be a minus eight. Because when you take the absolute value, it gives you eight, and that's what we want. Okay, so that means that if I now have a look and see what we have here, we have a 4a, we could say that the 4a is allowed to be equal to eight, or the 4a is also allowed to be the same as minus eight. You might have to just rewind and think about what we've just said there, because that, what we have just shown, is the fundamental or the most important part of absolute value equations, because now it's easy. Now we just go solve this like we normally would, so we will divide both sides by four, divide by four, and don't worry, we're gonna do a lot of examples in this lesson, so you will get the idea. And then we can say a is two, okay, that's our first answer, or we now need to go do it here. So you divide by four, divide by four, and you could say that a is minus two. And so that would be the answer for that one. Here we have our next question. Is the absolute value by itself? Yes, it is. What's the next step? Ignore whatever's inside the absolute value sign. Like literally scratch it out. Okay, what's inside there doesn't matter right now. What you need to ask yourself is, what number could you put inside this absolute value sign so that the answer is a one? Well, if you put a one inside the absolute value, that'll give you one. And if you put a minus one, that would also give you a one. Okay, so that means we can either put a one over inside here, or we can have it as a minus one, because when you take the absolute value, it's gonna give you a one. All right, so now what we do is we just check what's there. Okay, so we say for the first one, we can say that v over four is allowed to be equal to one, or v over four is allowed to be equal to minus one. And now we just need to go and solve to get the v by itself. So if you have a four at the bottom, then to get rid of that, you need to multiply both sides by four. Okay, that's what gets rid of that four over there. 
That's the opposite of whenever you have a situation like this. When you have a situation like this, then you divide by three to get rid of it on this side. But when the number, when the number is at the bottom, for example, v over two equals to three, when the number's at the bottom, then you multiply on both sides to get rid of that number, okay? So then on the left-hand side, you'll just have v, and on the right-hand side, you'll end up with four. Now on this side, we're going to do the same thing. So you're going to multiply by four at the top of here, and you're going to do the same over here. And that's going to end up giving us, um, or these cancel out, so that gives you v equals to negative four. And so those are the two answers for this question. Is the absolute value by itself? Yes, it is. So what's the next step? Ignore what's inside. So let's go ahead and scratch it out. The next step is to ask yourself, what number could you put inside here so that it gives you a two? Well, that could either be the absolute value of two because that would give you two, but it could also be the absolute value of minus two because that also gives you two if we understand how absolute values work. So that means that inside this bracket, it could equal two or it could be equal to negative two. So now we uncover and see what it is. Ah, n minus one. So for the first one, you could say that n minus one is allowed to be equal to two. And for the second part, you could say that n minus one is also allowed to be minus two. And then you just go and solve. So for this one, you would end up saying two plus one. And so that means it'll be three. And then for this one, it'll be minus two. And then we bring the minus one over to the other side. So it'll become a plus one. And so that answer would be negative one. Is the absolute value by itself? Yes, it is. Great. What's the next step? Block out whatever's inside the absolute value. The 5k plus 8 doesn't matter. That's not important to us right now. So we just ignore that. Now you've got to ask yourself, what number could you put inside here so that when you get the absolute value, it gives you 38? Well, the first one is the absolute value of 38 because that'll obviously give us 38. The second one is if you have minus 38 because that also gives us 38. So it means that whatever's inside here is allowed to be equal to 38 or negative 38. So now for the first option, we could say 5k plus 8, let's write that a bit better, is allowed to be equal to 38. For the second option, you could say 5k plus 8 is also equal to, or is also allowed to be negative 38. Um, and now we can just go and solve each one. So I'm going to take the 8 over to the other side. So that means that 5k would now be 30. I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And so k would now be equal to 30 divided by 5, which is 6. Now we're going to try this one. So we're going to take the 8 over to the other side. So we're going to get minus 38 minus 8. And so 5k would be equal to negative 46. And then we can divide both sides by 5. And so k is not going to give us the nicest answer, but it's going to be negative 46 over 5. Up till now, we've only been looking at type 1 absolute value equations where the absolute value was always by itself. Now we are going to start looking at examples where the absolute value is not by itself, such as this one. Can you see that the absolute value is not by itself? So the step one is to always make sure that it is by itself. So that means we're going to have to move this five over to the other side. So because we pl because it's um, being We'll be, sorry, because this in the front is a positive, when you take it to the other side, it'll become a negative. So you're going to end up with negative 3x minus 1, the absolute value of that, equals to 34 minus 5. Then you can say the absolute value of that equals to 34 minus 5, which is 29. And now we are back to type 1 questions where the absolute value is by itself. So the, now we can use our normal approach where you just get rid of this, whatever's inside the absolute value, just completely scratch it out. We don't care what that is. And now we ask ourselves, what number could you put inside here 
so that when you get the absolute value, it'll give you 29. Well, the first option is that, whoopsie, is that you just use 29 because the absolute value of 29 is 29. Your second option is that you have minus 29. Why? Because the absolute value of that also gives you 29. So that means that whatever's inside here could be 29, but it could also be negative 29. Let's see what we have. There it is. So for the first part, we could say that, that whatever's inside the absolute value is allowed to be 29, or whatever's inside that absolute value is also allowed to be negative 29. And now we just solve. So you can do this however you want, but I'm gonna take this minus one to the other side where it will become a positive. And so we end up with negative three x equals to 30. We're then gonna divide both sides by negative three, not just three, negative three. And that means that x would then be equal to negative 10. Or, now we're gonna go do this one. So this is the option number two. So we, I'm gonna take the minus one over to that side. So that'll be minus three x equals to minus 29 plus one. So that means negative three x is equal to negative 28. And then we're gonna divide by negative three on both sides. And so x would be 28 over three. Two more examples. Okay, so is the absolute value by itself? No, it's not. Look at that four. That needs to go. Because remember, we always want the absolute value by itself. So how are we going to move it to the other side? Well, this four is currently, oh, by the way, you must not multiply this four into the bracket. That is not correct. A lot of learners want to do that. Um, you don't want to multiply it in. What you rather want to do is take it to the other side. So how? Are we going to plus it, minus it, times, divide it? Well, it's always the opposite. So these four, this four and this absolute value sign, they are currently being multiplied. So we'll do the opposite of that and we'll divide. So we'll divide both sides by four. Okay, and so you end up with this, and then 24 divided by four is six. Now we have a normal absolute value question where the absolute value is by itself. So what do we do now? Well done, if you remember, we're just gonna ignore what we have inside there. You might be starting to get the hang of this now and you don't have to like block this out the whole time. You know what you're gonna do. So now what we do is we ask ourselves, what number could we put inside here so that it gives us a six after you take the absolute value? Well, the first option is that you just put the number six. And the second option is that you put minus six because even the, the absolute value of minus six still gives us a six. And so what that means then is that whatever's inside here is allowed to be a six, but it's also allowed to be a negative six. So now let's quickly see what we have inside the absolute value. Aha, so for the first one, we could say that minus three X minus nine is allowed to be six. And for the second option, we could say that it is also allowed to be minus six. And so now we just go solve. So I'm gonna take this minus nine to the other side. So it becomes a plus nine. And so that means minus three X is equal to 15. I'm then gonna divide both sides by negative three. And so X would be negative five. For the second option, I'm just gonna take this minus nine to the other side. So we end up with uh, negative six plus nine. And so that means negative three X would be equal to three. I then divide both sides by negative three. And so X would be negative one. Here is our last example. Is the absolute value by itself? No, it's not because there's the absolute value. And then we've got this random five. So step one, you have to get the absolute value by itself. So we need to take this five to the other side. But the question is how are we gonna plus, minus, times, or divide? Remember, you always do the opposite of what's already happening. So at the moment, this absolute value and this five, they are being divided. So the opposite of that, is to multiply. So we are gonna multiply both sides by five so that it cancels out on this side. So what you then end up with is the absolute value of six N plus, well that looks like a 16, of six N plus five equals to 25 because five times five is 
25. Now the absolute value is by itself and so now we can ignore what's inside the absolute value sign and then what we do is we ask ourselves what number could we put inside there so that when you get the absolute value it'll give us 25. The first option is that you just use 25 because the absolute value of 25 is 25. The second option is that you use the absolute value of negative 25 because that still gives you 25. So whatever's inside here is allowed to be 25 or negative 25. Now we can see what's under there. And there we have it. So for option one, we could say that the 6n plus 5 is equal to 25. For option number two, we could say 6n plus 5 is equal to negative 25. And now it's just a matter of solving. So I'm going to take this 5 over to the other side. So you'd end up with 6n is equal to 25 minus 5. And so 6n would be equal to 20. And so if you divide both sides by 6, you're going to end up with 20 over 6, which simplifies to 10 over 3. For the second option, I'm going to take this 5 over to the other side. And so we end up with minus 25 minus 5. And so 6n would be negative 30. I then divide both sides by 6. And so n would be negative 5.